Welcome to the So You'll Want to Get Fat podcast. I am your host, not your typical chef, Brian Sao, winner of Beat Bobby Flay season one. Polly, loser of season one, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. <laughs> What's up, Frenchie? How you doing? I'm good. It's good to see you, buddy. Well, and that's actually true. You're the winner. I'm the loser. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to do all my intros. Loser of season one of yeah, Beat Bobby yeah, Flay. No, I kind of like that. Uh, I, I think we should Of course do... you would like that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Ego boost. One of the few ego boosts I get when I'm hanging out with you because I'm just going to get straight into this shit. The viewer comments. So podcast episode, I don't even fucking remember. I think number... 0.75. Yeah, Why? you got me all confused. Yeah, I, was, I, I confused myself. It doesn't Why matter. Why don't you do minus one, minus two, minus three, or... Fuck, I should have done that's that. That's de like decimals. Yeah, I should have done that. No, that's not a decimal. I did decimals. You're talking negatives. Yeah, why don't you do negatives? Well, obviously, I fucked up. So, anyway. Um, episode... By the time we're filming this... Uh, by the time this comes out, rather, episode 0 0.75 would have been out for a while, but doesn't matter. I just wanted to bring to light how on that episode, I had mentioned many times that I have a very small female viewer ratio to male. You have? On the main- Well, oh, that makes sense. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what, and it's improved since I'm on it? Well, probably, probably, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, clearly- Even though I'm not woke? Clearly, the ladies love you because you would you would say all this shit and I would keep commenting throughout that episode that you're just shooting down our very you know lackluster female audience but no no they love you they love you Frenchie do they come to my defense in fact yes they do so glad I just well this is fun size fun size fun size she says so glad I discovered y'all edit to add as part of the 10% female audience I absolutely love Frenchie and don't mind his jokes at all. He is, he is hilarious. And then Niala Balgobin 6016 wait, wait, says- Wait, what did you say? Ball gagging? What? <laughs> says Frenchie is so funny. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. But it's an acquired taste. It is an acquired taste. I don't know. I don't Because think... Blondie doesn't think I'm that funny. I could be, let's be honest. She's like, he's not funny. He's not yet. Yeah. Well, but but I think that is what a lot of people find funny, at least when you and Blondie are together, the fact that she doesn't enjoy your humor as much. And I just love seeing she, that clash. She doesn't, she doesn't, she doesn't appreciate my humor. No, she doesn't like my, that humor. <laughs> You know, well, she especially doesn't like that French snickery, you right. know, that black dark humor. She, right. she doesn't that like piece that piece of shit humor. Yeah, well, because yeah. well, that's what French people are. That humor <laughs> is very dark. Yeah, and like yeah. me and my siblings, yeah. we'd have that dark humor, and she's like, I don't get it. Like, why this is not, this is not positive. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's the but, but also, uh, not just French. I think a lot of kitchen cultures. A lot yeah, like well, that. a lot of ball on top, busting on it, top of that. Yeah, yeah. Hospitality bit. When you have to deal with the public, yeah, you get that sense of humor. Right. It's like one step below, like comics. You know, comics yeah. have that within them, their group. Like they have to taper. Like the shit they talk about between them is. Oh yeah, yeah. Is horrendous. It's fucking horrendous. By the way, if you guys hear a little bit of clicking, the the weather's getting colder here in New York and this is a very old building. So you want to talk about old school New York. Not only do we have two OGs and an old school New we Yorker. Have steam. We have steam radiators where you get the clicking. So if in future cooking videos when we finally get that room wide cam that room built out, uh you will hear the clicking. You will hear the clicking. Anyway, so. You picked up on that, I did. Layla, well, you know me and the editing and all that stuff, and you know, that's my world. Anyway, Layla Hotman, 1897. What is that, Layla Hodeman? <laughs> Are you reading these right? I, I Apparently not. I'll let you read the next one. Uh, so here we go. Definitely love Frenchie as a woman in your audience. And look at that, three thumbs up. Three, and and I, and I what took the, this. Wait. She, what do you mean? She, what do you, so what three she do? other people agreed with her. Oh. Yeah, because I, I took this snapshot only two hours after the episode came out. So, Okey -doke. you know, who knows how many more thumbs up that comment got. Here we have another one. Catherine Jones, 5807, as a member of the 10% Women Woman Club. So now we created a club. <laughs> we created a club. <laughs> oh, I need this club to grow, though. I love and respect both of you. Kissy emoji. 
Seriously, I really enjoy watching you both excited, uh, excited about good food, no matter how many years both of you have been in the business. The thrill of seeing an unexpected take on a dish, especially Guga's side dishes, never gets old. Oh, we love our Guga. Yeah. We love a Guga. So this is the video, um, that, which Guga? No, no, this is from, this is all from the podcast. This is oh, all okay. comments from the podcast. I just, I'm just trying to make a point that, you know, the ladies love you and I shouldn't be ragging on your, on your humor <laughs> so much. You know? Nah, keep me in check because yeah. you know, I'm going to fuck up at yeah. some point. Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, here we go. Here's another comment I thought was funny. For Bunny says, I need someone to look at me the same way Frenchie looks at Guga. Yeah, but we've, I fell in love with Guga piecemeal. First it was the voice. Yeah. Then it was the hands. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then it was the- Then the side dishes. Then, then it was the reveal. Yeah. No, no, no. It was a great, uh, it was like a great blind date. <laughs> All righty. Well, and then also, you know, uh, let's remind the audience, Frenchie, that uh, when you come when you come to Le Ravage and when you walk through the door, before you are even seated, what do you want? What do you want these people, oh, people to do? people need to mention our podcast. Yes. Yes. And they'll hook it up. They'll make it a I, special listen, night for we, you. We take care of everybody, but yeah. we are especially more appreciative mm -hmm. these days for our podcast, podcast followers. Which there is more and more. And actually, some of you have taken photos with me mainly, because apparently I've become the new unofficial ambassador of Le Ravage. Big ass Asian walking through a French dining room. Ooh, you, you pulled out the big ass Asian? Yeah. Did you tell people that? No, 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 no. Oh. Okay. That's our thing. <laughs> oh, that's our thing. Okay. Yeah. It's a little, uh, little Easter egg, I guess I planted there. A oh, little, okay. A, a little, you know. Anyway, apparently, uh, Frenchie has made me his unofficial uh, Le Ravage mascot, despite not speaking. Well, I speak a couple words of French now. No, me or Tebow, because <laughs> he doesn't want to deal with it. <laughs> so Tebow, the general manager, will. I'm, I'm, I'm up here working all the time. So Tebow will come up to me like, "Hey, there's a couple of customers came, mentioned the podcast." I'm like, "I'll be right down, Tebow. Good. Don't worry. Don't Good. Worry. Yeah, yeah. Not gonna call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's definitely not gonna call you. He's so, not calling me. So, uh, if you have photos, please post them. We'll, yeah. we'll put it on. We'll, we'll show it on the podcast. Oh, that would be sweet. I would yeah. like that. But um, here, somebody, one, one of our viewers. Wait, this is you finally put big print. I can read this. This uh, is very nice of you. <laughs> I can read that. You want to read this one? Yeah, Lori Vaj has the best burger. Wait, wait, who's it from? Who's it from? Uh, at John Drews two hundred six. Lori Vaj has the best burger I have ever tasted. French onion soup burger. Whenever I'm in New York City, I have to stop to get one. Thank you, Chef Paul. Isn't that sweet? Where are you going? Oh. Show the wide cam. Wide cam. The Fosby. <laughs> the Fosby. Fosby. I'm not gonna get tired of doing that. No, tell you. no, you, you we and need I both. To, I need to we need to pull out all the other t-shirts that I have. Or yeah. do we or should we like No no let's ramp it up. Let's let's get some fan art first. You know, okay. who knows? Because you know, we film pretty, you know, ahead. So by the time this episode comes out, we may be like, fuck, we shouldn't have mentioned the fucking t-shirts and the art because this whole place will be plastered with <clears throat> Uh, because I have ADD in it, I'm gonna go on a tangent. I finally watched one of our episodes on. When did you put it? Sunday. Uh, w for Pro Chef Reacts. <laughs> I watched one of our episodes. Okay. Um, I say the word like oh, a lot. Yes, yes, you do. Actually, I've been meaning to tell you that. It is so fucking annoying. <laughs> so, so this it is, is so fucking, fucking annoying. annoying. It is, it is. Uh, likes, ums, um, it's, it's like. very common. And trust me, the more you watch yourself, the more you start to catch yourself. Oh God, it's horrendous. Yes, it so, is. So I will work on this. So please have patience for the- So is a, another one you say a lot. So, so, so. so oh, wait, so wait, I picked <laughs> up on like and ums. Now you got so. Yeah. And, but, but, but. And literally. You're not. A, the word li literally. For some reason, I use that word a lot. But you're not alone. Like almost everybody who's somewhat yes. new to camera, it's very but my common. problem is I hate <clears throat> on my kids when they do it. I'm like, do they give like, you some, like, I'm like, I'm like. Do they give you some flack? Not yet. Oh, I'm surprised. They didn't see it yet, maybe. That, that just goes to show that they haven't <laughs> seen the show. <laughs> so people, every time oh I say God. the word like, you're gonna have a lot. <laughs> I can't believe you just did that. What? 
because I used to do a drinking game on Pro Chef Reacts when the show was just solo by myself. By the way, Frenchie is now the consistent co-ho. Maybe once in a while he won't make it, but he is pretty much the consistent, not pretty much, he is the co-host of Pro Chef Reacts on the Chef Brian Sound main channel. Is that, is that, is his title gonna have to change? Yeah, yeah, eventually, eventually, you know, but, uh, the point I'm trying to make is in the early days of Pro Chef Reacts, I used to do drinking games. Like every time something happened, I'd be like, oh, this is happening. Well, we kind of thought we were doing that because at the time there was, it was um, <clears throat> drunk history. All those shows were happening. Right, right. It's not sustainable. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and by you making this game happen, you may have killed somebody. No. Yeah. With the amount of likes. You said every time you say like. Not when I say like, when he says like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, let's, so let's not play this game. No, let's play it. Let's be dangerous. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so don't the, add the word so, ums, like. <laughs> no, so we'll do just the word like. Like. Yeah. But now I'm going to be on my toes not to use the word like. Trust me, it gets better. It gets better. It gets better. Here, I like this comment a lot. Matthew Toure. I don't know. Is that a French uh, last name Ma right there? Oh, Matthew, Mathieu, Mathieu Touré. 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 Yeah. I don't know, is the H silent or is it, or, or is it a th, 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 uh, th, maybe. th. Maybe. Or is uh, it a th, the Ray? Brian is Bill Nye. Frenchie is Beekman's world. <laughs> Why is that funny? What's Beekman? <gasps> you don't know Beekman's world? I actually am a bigger fan of Beekman's world than Bill Nye. You know who Bill Nye Bill is, Bill Nye, right? the science guy. The science guy. Okay, so around the same time, there was another show called Beekman's world. For some reason, I'm thinking... Be oh, I'm thinking of Beaker on the Muppet Show. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! So clue. he was also a science dude, but he was a lot more wacky than uh, no clue than Bill Nye. Oh, I love this show so much. I love this show way more than Bill Nye. I, I actually wish I was Bill Nye, but um, you're definitely the wackier one of the two of us, for sure. He, okay, uh, this is a lot, he's a lot to look at. Frenchie, that spray tan, <laughs> that isn't it, Chief? Spray tan. I don't get this spray tans. But this was when you were fr fresh back from uh, from uh, where was it France, and you were super tanned. Episode, I get dark really quick. Yeah, episode five. But, but I lose zero. my tan just as quickly. Yeah, yeah, your your tan's pretty much completely gone. All right, well, that was some viewer comments. You know, you you like to do viewer questions. But I like uh, questions. I, I like comments. I th I think comments are funny sometimes. With that said, comments are like opinions and they're like assholes. Everybody's got one. Yeah, more or less, more or less. Some are better than others. You know, some uh, some I really want to comment on, some I want to bring forth. No, but what did just, I tell you? Yes, yes. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. We have enough fans. We, we actually do have fans to defend us. us. We don't yeah. need to, we don't need you to. beautiful people. We love you. Uh, one topic that you uh, brought up a while ago is you felt that the world of particularly television chefs had really started to digress right well dumbing it down I dumbing it down dumbing it down of, yeah. of the food network yeah and, and stuff like that and all that stuff um with that said it got me thinking social media and food is it helping food move forward or is it holding it back what's your opinion on this because it has become necessary for every dining establishment or at least they should be making it in a priority to really have at least an effort into their social media. Yeah. I mean, my entire I'm shop, very bad at it. You are very bad at it. Oh, remember the dick on your, uh, yeah. the steak dick? Steak dick, steak dick. Ah! It's still there. Steak dick. That is a terrible picture. <laughs> it's still there though. It's still there. <laughs> I don't know how many times you've told me this. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. With that said, though, I mean, my restaurant is built on social media. If it wasn't for social media, we wouldn't be where we are today, which I'm glad to say is in a very good place. Um, but yeah, what's your feeling on it? Because um, there's some outrageous stuff out there. There's some incredibly cool stuff out there. Yeah, there right? is. Yeah. And then you can, it's, it's a necessary evil. Right. I don't want to call it evil. It's just, I'm annoyed that we have to do it. Let's put it that right. way. Right. I remember the, the golden age of restaurants where you, none of this mattered. You know right. what I mean? And then the trendy- Just about the food. It was, it was just about the service. It was service. about the, the, the restaurant and its food. Right. It wasn't about the celebrity chef. It wasn't about the chef. And yeah. it wasn't about, you know, 
what can I get out of it? Right. It was just. Right. Yeah, that's another aspect, right? All these influencers trying to get yeah. something out of it. A lot of these influencers wanting a free yeah. meal, you know? But True. now a lot of these big influencers are charging money to be on their pages. I don't, I'll, ne I'll never pay for advertisement. That's yeah. one thing I'm proud of. I've never paid for advertisement. But a lot of people will like come over and then like, oh, can we get a free dinner or yeah. something like that? So is that paying for advertisement? In yeah. some ways, yeah. I, I think- But it I does, think... I know that it's it's worth more to them than it is to me. Right. It's costing me the cost of the food and right. the labor to bring it. So it's cheaper than than what the dollar amount right. of right. the check. And it is very effective marketing. It is, marketing, you know. but it's very short-lived. Right, right. It is very short-lived. Uh, I will agree with that. It's very short-lived. Yeah. It, the, the trendiness of it is quick yeah so i can tell you for my place we utilized everything we utilized people to come in and there are people who came in just for a free sandwich there are people that we can't you know had we uh, paid them to come in um you have to kind of weigh it out uh some people have millions of followers some people don't obviously we don't want to be paying for everybody you know so we just... how many followers does someone need to have to warrant having them in your restaurant uh f like where i pay them no oh okay uh dinner for two because you can't have the one person right coming. right well uh dinner for two is just starting <clears throat> for me now i would be like minimum 100k right you okay. need to have about that's 100K. what i was thinking yeah and, I, and then i'm and i'm an amateur at right like this stuff. um when the shop first opened i was a you know wasn't as you know, I, I wasn't as, what's the word? Like I wasn't looking at that number as much. If it was like 20K and up, I was okay with giving them a sandwich. That's not dinner for two. You know, dinner for two at a full service restaurant is significantly more expensive than a sandwich. But if someone wanted to give us coverage and- but It's relative, right? Yeah, it's relative. No, no, no. I, I, the overhead's just a lot more on a dinner for two at a, at like your place, your place versus mine. Mine is, I don't have a busser. I don't have a server, right? The problem is, however, you do a customer just sitting at my table. Right, looks good. I already have to pay for the linen, right. the glass of water, right. the silverware, anything that's on that table right. can't reuse. Right. If they're if they're in the proximity, <clears throat> it's got to it's you done. Go. With. Yeah. So you have to replace all of that. You have to wash all of that. So then, you might as well go full tilt and yeah. get them to dinner. But for you, I definitely would not do dinner for two for anything less than a hundred k. Yeah, you know that's that's my. Um, every now and then, I'll still like someone has fifty k subscribers. But you see, I had today someone like I really didn't want to do it, right? But I have a long-standing customer, mm -hmm. and he's starting to become. He wants to get into this foodie mm -hmm. type business, and you know he's been here before, and I know him. He's yeah. been. I think he was here with Gotham Burger or, or something like that. A real fan, right? Like who wants to be associated, right. and, and if it helps him build, right, right, his audience, right. then I can get that favor repaid maybe in the future. Right, right. You right. Know what I mean, and uh, I feel the same exact way. I've definitely done some collabs with people who like didn't really have uh, much of a following, but they they were nice enough. They were very polite about it, mm. you know, and uh, I can tell that they were just being genuine. You know, like they genuinely liked the sandwich shop. They weren't there just for. Um, for a free sandwich. You know, you can tell from a mile away. Yeah. Someone who's genuinely there because they love what you're doing right. instead of selling a service to you and they can just go someplace else. Now it makes a difference. But I prepared some clips because uh, while um, social media is like you said, uh, a necessary evil, it has definitely helped propel a whole new economy sector for the food and beverage industry, right? But there are also, which is a good thing. I believe ultimately that's a good thing. But one thing that I, there are always gonna be cons to the pros, right? And then there is food just for the sake of being visual that I cannot fucking stand. We've covered this a little bit, talking about trends that we are glad to see go. This Things is- that we know for a fact look good on camera, but taste like shit. Yeah. Or just doesn't make sense. Like right. this clip right here, I'm gonna show you. Chicken fried cupcakes. No. Like it's it, it looks fun. I, I'm not I'm not taking any anything away from that. It's it's um ooh, you're mashing two things that are so different from one another, and sure. 
Um, I'm sure if that buttercream that's on there is like, you know, maple syrup flavored, kind of replicating if it's the like flavors a, of a waffle. If but, it's butter, yeah, that you can that can translate into a sauce. Like, yeah. uh, okay, but I just like I and then I would make that like a corn muffin. So like right. basically a barbecue, right. barbecue, and then you make the the coating like a, a bourbon flavored butter, right, cream or something right. like that to right. go with the chicken. Right, it's fun. But I, it's to me, this is not a functional dish, right? Because you're holding a cupcake, all right? So generally a cupcake, something easy, you grab it, you take the paper off, you take a bite. But you this, should, I gonna, usually want my cupcakes without bones. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was getting at. So now you're gonna need a tray to eat the chicken and you have a bone in it and then you gotta, you know, fuss with everything. I just, th this to me is, is food that is visual for the sake of, of social media, in my opinion. That hotel pen does, just doesn't look attractive. They would have been better off just putting one on a plate yeah. with like a blank background. Well, maybe they're about to serve this at a, some, you know, uh, what's it? What does here? it say? Smash or smash pass? Or pass. Oh, so it's a pass for us. Uh, smash or pass. That time I had chicken. Oh, cornbread fried. based stuff. Oh, there mac you go. There oh, you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. With mac and cheese, frosted by garlic, mashed potatoes, and finished with some crispy Crunchy. All right, so it's very well thought out. Okay, definitely, yeah. Definitely, but I, I don't think it's a function. I would rather dish. have the real dish on a plate. Yes, yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Now, uh, here's another thing. We've, uh, we've reacted to this guy, and um, I want to shout out. Who is this? I want to shout out Sal Salsa. You sent this to me on Instagram, wanting me to show this to Frenchie. I have not watched this yet, but we have reacted to this guy when we reacted to August the Duck, as we do. Unlike Sniper Wolf, we actually add things to our reaction. Uh, but yeah, this is Barfly Quadruple Sevens and his crazy hotel room cooking. And he oh, made no, French no, onion no, 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 I don't like these. <laughs> no, these are the, the, san the sanitary issues alone are... What? Okay, that's... Bouillon cubes? Ugh. Ugh! <laughs> Dude... Do you know what happens in hotel sinks? Ugh! That this is horrendous. No, oh, no, oh. no, come on. Ah, uh, he Don't just fucking that. ruined the yeah. septic system for those people. No, no, that, oh, fucking Christ. Don't tell me you're going to eat out of that. No, no, don't. C can we stop? <laughs> no. Okay. So, no, we don't. We didn't need that in our lives. <laughs> you're so upset. <sighs> that's just stupidity. But but this is what I mean about food, social media and food. That's right? that's but, not real. He he ate it. That's real. He really did that shit. He obviously didn't eat that whole sink. I, I don't I don't know. Do you look at that dude? I think he ate the whole sink. Listen to what we just said. <laughs> he didn't eat the whole sink. Yes, he did eat the whole sink. Yeah. Next. <laughs> no. That, All right, but yeah. So is, I get it. This is. That's a that's more dumbing down. Right, right. But here's another clip that I wanted to bring up. Right, so we have food that is made on social media. Oh, for I know the this visual, guy. Right. He's been one of the judges at our uh, at the Food and Wine <clears throat> Festival too. All right, Kujin. Yeah, he's he's annoying. I'm sorry, but he's annoying. <laughs> so I know he's got a big following. and He's got the big Italian he yeah, talks yeah. like the old school Italian. Yeah, Brooklyn. But they're not Paul V. Dinamiel, which I just learned. V is the initial for your middle name. And I was like, what could it be? What the fuck does V stand for? Paul, give me my fucking Vig. Vig. <laughs> Where's my Vig? Where's my Vig? Well, uh, you know, Kujin uh, knows how to cook, but this is another type of social media food content. Full eight cups thinner than Bill Cosby's morals. Add the Charlie Sheen special. Lay down an egg. Time to fondle the breast. Nice dollar than Joe Biden at the podium. Yeah, he's an everybody. Lo he's a cheap version of everybody loves Raymond. Vesuvius. Sada. It matches the tracksuit. 
Sometimes you get lucky with a rock. Oh yeah. Using a paper dish, I'm pretty sure this is against the bylaws. Looks like Paulie D fresh out Shit, of the Shit, that looks good. Time. Does oh, look good. how it rains in Sicily. Very nice. Ugh, better than sniffing glue. Tossing the cutlets in the vodka sauce. Some pecorino romano. The pearls. He knows how to cook. He knows what he's doing. They gotta prick my finger into the That's fan. That's a very nice touch. That was very... Pistachio pesto. Don't ask how I made it. Toasting the bread hard you know your your chicken cutlet cooked in the vodka sauce that cutlet that's the outer crust is no longer going to be crispy but you get the crispiness from the very toasted bread i, like okay, I apologize this, this looks good this looks delicious this over a pair of tits i have a fresh burratas a couple of long hots what do you think was done over here? Yeah. just saying this looks better than anything da vinci Fuck ever yeah. did and on the eighth day god created this hammer bang Half an hour, I didn't spill an ounce on the track suit. Little by little. You're gonna tell me brain surgery is harder <laughs> than Nah, here's sandwich. your problem. <laughs> <laughs> How do you eat that? I sandwich. don't care. I just want it in my, in my mouth. mouth. There you go. This brings a tear to my eyes. On orders from this sandwich, nobody's brushing their hair today. Okay, I thought that was sick as fuck. Yeah. You know, I, I wanted to give you examples of all different spectrums of food, social media content because I thought that was cool. Yeah, and that one's okay. You know, like, but this, but social media also gives the average person the opportunity. But he's to, got a consistent shtick. And he's got a consistent, consistent shtick. Yeah. And he's got, how many, how many followers does he have? Oh, uh, let's see. Cause I can't be ha hating on people who have. 1.2 million. There you go. Yeah, he's then, doing something right. Then he's doing something right. Yeah. Both things are happening. Food is moving forward because of social media, but it's also moving backwards. And what that means ultimately is that the food landscape is changing. It's. It goes in line with um, free speech. Mm. To be a fan of free speech, to, to support, you, you got to take the good with the bad. And yeah. this is what this is, yeah. you know? Yeah. The good and the bad. Yep, yep. 100%. Ah, and to each his own. All right. Wow. You're not wowing me yet on this episode. Oh, we're getting there. Okay. We're getting there, buddy. Okay. You know, you know, we uh, have, you know, we have to retain our viewers. Well... I have a clip for you. Oh, shit, here we, and here we go. Here we go. You can assume that I'm gay just because I have rainbow hair, wearing a rainbow shirt, I got a rainbow prize flag behind. How can you assume that I'm disabled just because I have a messed up body with messed up hands <laughs> and I drive a mobility scooter because I can't walk? How are you going to <laughs> Your face is just gay just because Dude. He just put it all out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good for him. <laughs> Let's get to uh, the real thing. The, uh, the highlight of today's episode. Few weeks ago, we did a MyHeritage DNA test because I wanted to see. Oh, oh, oh these are oh. the kids. Oh, it, can I take this? Yes, of course. Blondie. Hey, Blondie, you're on speakerphone and on the podcast. Hello. <laughs> oh, wait a sec. This is Blondie's intro to the oh show. Oh, my God. This is Blondie's intro to the show. Shit. Hello. Hello. Oh, wait, wait. Let me get you to the speaker. <laughs> I'm so jealous. So, I'm so excited. This is a big moment for me. Yes, 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 yes. So Can Blondie does exist. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you're already having fun. Yeah, we are. This is the whole point. If it, if we're not having fun, then we're not going to do this anymore. <coughs> right? Oh, ouch. Correct. <laughs> All right. Okay, baby. All right. Have fun. I'll talk to you later. I love you. Love you, too. Say, you, lo say you love me. Oh, I love you. Okay, I love Tell you. Brian, I love him, too. <laughs> oh, I love you, too, Allie. Love you, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Should be throwing I love yous. I all go like, what the fuck? Gives me more I love yous than you give me I, I love you. yous. God. I have to like trick you for I love yous. Yes, you do. I have to like, like give you overly sappy, tender moments. But I to get purposely do the I love you on the phone because like she was always test me like if I was like, okay, I love you, and if I and wouldn't answer, I love yeah. you back. Yeah. Because, oh, either because I was in a scenario. Yeah. And then, but I never thought of it because I don't say I right, love you. Right, right. So now I purposely, <laughs> purposely say it all the time because she's like, "Oh, you're too cool to say I love you." I'm like, yeah, well, fuck uh, no. When I say I love you to my wife, she's, uh, she's uh, like, she doesn't respond. It'll be like, 
I said I love you, and she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Like that time in the in the when we getting off the plane, and like I had to call Blondie for proof of yeah. life, yeah. and then you called your wife, and she's like, okay, that's enough now, you can go. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Blondie will talk all night. <laughs> Which is weird because before she was never a phone person. I would, oh, really? I'd be the one trying yeah. to talk to her, and she was yeah. like, "No, no, like, I don't, I don't do yeah, phones." Yeah. Now she's constantly on the phone. Yeah, wifey for me, she, she like the sooner she can get off the phone, the better. Yeah, well, you know, I got shit to do. She's, got, she does. She does. She wears the pants. She does. So and I wear the little black dress. Oh, <laughs> can't wait for tonight. I can't wait either because we got a feasty boy segment for you. But that's going to be at the end of the video. So wait. Make sure you watch till the end to see that. We did the My Heritage DNA. We wanted to see how French is Frenchy. Frenchy. Yes, how French is Frenchy. So you ready, buddy? Because yeah, we've I've been getting a lot of hate. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah. No one believes that you're French. Right. Everyone thinks you're Jewish. Or Italian. Or Italian. Or from the Bronx. Yeah. <laughs> Which by the, by the way, one of Frenchy's good friends who is, you know, I, soon gonna become my good friend because he seems cool as shit uh is also another person with zero french accent that speaks fluent french yeah well, they well, exist but all my friends uh growing up were like that <laughs> I, we, we went to a french school and all the main classes were taught in french so you had french as a first language but then everything else was in english so like yeah just said like mm. uh, no, I'm noticing <laughs> it. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. no, this is gonna put a no, hamper. No, 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 this is gonna be a good thing. Trust me. You sure? Yeah, okay. I, trust me. Trust me. It's gonna be a good. Thing. Our social lives, our friendships were in English mostly. Mm -hmm. Um, so we could go, we could go, we could skip from one language to another very quickly and yeah. without accents. And then I also have Spanish, mm -hmm. and then I also have a very limited language a patois from where i come from in france like uh -huh. this little small village which is the in the pyrenees in mountains. the pyrenee mountains yeah, right, yeah, right. pyrenees or pyrenee P pyrenee yes uh -oh. in english they say the pyrenees okay okay which sounds yucky yeah yeah, yeah. pyrenee I, i've been learning picking up a little bit more french here and there well, like, you've been ma making an effort in my direction yeah yeah well because don't i don't expect that in return yeah it's fine i, I don't want to hear you speak chinese and you already speak enough languages. I do. Uh, and also, you don't want to learn Chinese from me. You know, when when my dad talks to his friends about me, he'll say like, "Yeah, my my son's my son's Chinese as shit. Sounds like a white guy." Well, that's his fucking fault. <laughs> like, right? <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I get blamed for my you know you know what I said to him I was like so fucking what it shows that I made the goddamn effort to learn the language and you didn't go to school you didn't go to a Chinese school no no I didn't I didn't learn Chinese until I was 12 13 years old I didn't oh that's even more impressive yeah I didn't speak a lick of it I I could say you know a few 12, words 12 13 you're still on the spectrum of like absorb yeah, like absorbing like sponge that sponge yeah, yeah you can still there's nothing better to learn a language than just immersing yourself in it and then you have no fucking other solution but to learn it and that goes because I know my sister; she didn't speak French, and then then she got I shipped her to France, and within a year she came back. She was like, "Oh no!" Sure. And it yeah. stuck. Like, how old was how old was she when you sent her there? She was still young, in her twenties. Oh. oh, really? She learned it in her twenties. Yeah. Oh, good for her. Yeah. Awesome. And to this day, she has not forgotten it. That's awesome. Good for her. You need to like practice it, right? Which is why I think I'm getting a little hate. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when I speak French, mm -hmm. I have an American accent. Right. Because I, I'm still focused on American words. Yeah. So the American accent leeches in. Leeches in. Right. right. I go to France. Right. I'm strictly talking French. Right. It'll probably it, uh, it dissipates. Out. It takes right. it takes me a week for it to go, to leave. Right. Because when I get back here, right. now all of a sudden I have a French accent. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> now every time I call Frenchy on the phone, which is quite often, once he picks up, the first thing I say is Bonjour, mignon. Bonjour, mignon. <laughs> all right. Let's go, buddy. Let's see how French Frenchy really is. Okay. <laughs> Paul is. <laughs> Wait, did you make a video? No, this is their shit. 39% Italian? 25% <laughs> Irish, Scotch, and Welsh? Oh my god. Nah, no, that's bullshit. 22% North and West European. Uh, what does that fucking mean? 
13.5% Iberian. Spanish? What? This makes no fucking sense. Oh. <gasps> Whoa. I don't see. I mean, the purple is uh, 22. Yes, yeah, France, Germany, Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium. You know. The majority is Italian? The majority is Italian. Maybe that's why you tan so easily. <laughs> Wait a second. Holy shit. No. Dude, I w I'm shocked by this. This is kind of awesome. Yeah, but it's all over the place. Look. It is. It it's, is. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think because I, I think I did one of these a long time ago right. and it was very clear like the French, they, like the French part was like acknowledged. Right. Well, I mean, here, view full ethnicity, ethnicity estimate. estimate. <laughs> you get in a fucking car, geez. getting insurance. <clears throat> All right, let's see this Northwest European part. What does that mean? Uh, the population of Northern and Western Europe mainly includes German, French, Dutch people. This region has been influenced by significant historical events, including the formation of the Catholic Church, the Renaissance. The Protestant Reformation and the Industrial Revolution. All right, I'm not gonna read the rest. Okay, well, it makes sense that yeah. the majority of my genetics is Iberian and North. So you put those together, that's like 30, whatever, 35%. Yeah. The rest I don't, wait, wait, no, I don't no, no. get. Wait, no, no, Iberian, Iberian yeah, and Yeah, Iberian Northwest. is Spanish. Oh, right, right. It makes, yeah, yeah. It makes sense because in the Pyrenees Mountains, we're on the border of Spain, right? So, okay. So those two connect. Okay, but this Irish, Scottish, no, and Welsh. No, but the, and the Italian, you know why? Why? And I can ex I could probably explain that because uh, Corsica yeah. was disputed between France and Spain. Mm. So both genetics are there. So a lot of oh. Italians went to Corsica yeah. and a lot of Corsicans, and I'm right next to that too. Right, right. So that kind of explains maybe that. You know what I just realized? What? Now. I'm Napoleon. <laughs> I'm fucking Napoleon. <laughs> what I was going to say now is uh, if we wanted to react to Italian food, I can now say My Italian <laughs> chef reacts <laughs> to carbonara. <laughs> Holy shit. This was. So, what are those new rings in the middle there? Uh, let's see. Uh. Uh, I, I think it's just like when I click on <gasps> Oh! What? what and what, it what? makes sense. It makes sense that the um, Irish, Scott, and Welsh now, because my mom is from the Brittany side of France, oh, which is all Celtic. Right, right, right. Celtic, right. sorry, right, right, Celtic. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, the Celtic. So, yeah, so I'm 25% Celtic. Yeah. That's what that means yeah. there. And the, actually, this is. This is very accurate. It's then, very right? accurate. Like, then. Be, What's so cool is you're like making sense of everything. Yeah, making right? sense of it. You know, because my shit just said Because like, I only base myself on my yeah. dad. Right, 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 right. right like right. we were, we were yeah. very close. Yeah. So like, I that's not what I think. Right. But if you factor a 50% of me right. from my mom, yeah. she's from Brittany yeah. and they come from, you know, more of a Celtic. Right. No, Celtic. Celtic. Celtic is the basketball team. Yes. Celtic is the- Culture. The culture. Yes, yes we're, we're Celtics. And she used to like, again, in France. So when you go to France, most people don't speak French, believe it yeah. or not. Yeah, there's a like a Every regional dialect. Every little area right? yeah. speaks their dialect. Yeah. So I grew up speaking French at school, dialect with my dad and English with oh, my Oh, your surround. dad spoke to you in the dialect oh, rather yeah. than just, just- Yeah, French was for proper use. Okay. Okay. Did what was it because he figured you were learning it in school? So no, that was his that was his main language. Oh, okay. So he he just preferred to speak. He's per, he preferred so much so that all the f staff, um, we're talking like late fifties, sixties. We had a majority of uh, Puerto Rican uh, chefs and workers and kitchen staff, and they adapted so well to my father and my uncles language that they all ended up speaking the same language so instead of us adapting yeah. to that yeah. they picked it up and we're speaking our your fucking yeah small town yeah, dialect like we're at, the, at that time maybe like i don't know 200 people in the world spoke yeah. it you know because that, that um, village almost died off yeah yeah and now it's coming back it's making now uh, a bunch of puerto ricans are running around new york but, but that's it. the thing 
these people visited um, our chef because he, they worked their whole lives with us. Mm -hmm. They were they were family. Uh, two of them, two brothers, and then another friend worked 50 years to the day for us. Wow. Meaning they started, he was yeah. 16 years old and he retired. There's a great story there yeah. too. He retired 50 years later to the day that he started. And I, he, was, he was working with me. I grew up learning from him and everything. Wow. And he said, oh, Paul, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retire yeah. such and such day. I was like, wait a second, that's in the middle of Christmas and New Year's yeah. Eve. I was like, I was like, you can't retire that. That's the busiest yeah. week of the year. He's yeah. like, Paul, on that day, I will have worked for your family 50 years to the date. I'm retiring on that. I wow. wanted to make it a point right, right. that I work 50 years. Right, right. And I was like, I can't argue with that. Right, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely not. Wow, very cool. This was a lot of fun. Did you have fun, buddy? I'm a, I'm like, I, I I don't see the word French. That's what bothers me. Well, but so- But they're I, incorporating. So yeah. why does it, why do they have Italian, but Italian look covers more than right, Italy, right? right? Oh, uh, you know, I'm not sure, but I will tell you this. I had a similar situation with my thing. It was just like, you know, Chinese, Japanese, I think was one section and then Mongolian. And I was like, where the fuck did Mongolian come from? But every anyone who's Asian, I, pretty much everyone in the world is part Mongolian at this point. Fucking Genghis Khan be making mad kids. Oh yeah. <laughs> didn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah, didn't he kill off like, like, like a part of he the world's He killed population? so many people that he changed the- uh, The demographic of the world. Well, the uh, human pollution. Uh, right? the, the carbon <laughs> footprint. Carbon <laughs> footprint, sorry. Is that the same thing? Is that the same thing? Yeah, same thing. Human uh, pollution. Yeah. I like human <laughs> I like, I, let's get that going. Let's Human get pollution. that on a t-shirt. But you see that, why, look, because that bubble covers mostly Frank. Well, oh, that, that's true. For that t-shirt, I'm gonna get uh, you dressed up as Genghis Khan saying, end to human pollution. <laughs> well, at least my grandfather's not alive to see that I'm German. <laughs> oh shit, good point. Hey buddy. Yeah. Do you like my new cup? It's a get fat coffee mug, baby. I like it. Check this. it out. Check it. No, it's mine. Where's the other one? I only have one. How do we only have one? Uh, I only asked for one and it's mine. Did I pay for it? <laughs> Actually, you did it. <laughs> it's a colored version of our t-shirt that's based on our original picture. Yeah. I love how our original picture is a recurring theme. Get fat tees are available now for pre-order. Once pre-orders are closed, they are gone for good. There will no longer be any releases of this. There is a bundle where you can get- What are you drinking? The it's, it's sparkling water. No wonder I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a bundle. You can get the Get Fat Tea, the Get Fat Coffee Mug for a cheaper price. But also, if you get the bundle, you get a free sticker as well. Limited edition. And once they're gone, they are gone for good. Frenchie, please tell everybody. Don't you want that? Get Fat Mug. Guys, link in the description below. Get your Get Fat merch today. Anyway, that was fun. All right, now we know. Frenchie is really only 22. I think you thought we were gonna have more fun with that. What are you talking about? I had a blast. Okay, good. Yeah, what, what why are you down? Why can't they fun? put French? <laughs> why are you so bothered by this? I don't know. Now we're gonna get, sh I'm gonna get shit for this. <laughs> you are, you're definitely gonna get shit for this. You now. know what? My passport says I'm French. In the not so breaking news. Not so breaking not news. Not so breaking news. Mario Batali's back. Why? Why would you do this? I, I yeah, I told you that he's, he's making, he's back on social media. Yeah. But I know he, we have to, Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, I just, uh, if you send me something, Frenchie, as your secretary. Yeah, but that was, but that was to show you, holy shit, he's back uh, on social okay, media. Well, can, can you specify that? Like maybe next time just say, I don't want to talk about this because I'm only a few uh, degrees of separation from this dude. I may get shit later. So Mario Batali got me too if you people uh, don't know. Yeah, between, uh, between, you know, uh, sexual harassment scandals, but also he wasn't doing too hot because of the whole tipping issue at his restaurants and something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. not what people remember. No, it's, no, I know, I know. It's the Me Too but, thing. But I, it waterfalled in one thing into the, the other. The tipping you know? didn't close him down. It's the Me Too shit that, like, yeah. you know. He was beloved. By who? By the public. Uh, he was. Until he got Me Too'd. Until he Real got Me bad. Too'd. Real bad. I mean, the man can cook. There's he no can cook. That. And you don't really have much to say on no. this one. No. <laughs> Okay, let's move it on. Oh. <laughs> All right, here. My people. <laughs> I would have loved to at least have 1% Asian in my goddamn genetics. 
Airline forced to book an extra flight after a group of sumo wrestlers made the plane too heavy to fly. <laughs> uh, I fucking love this page. Uh, how do you pronounce that? Puberty? Puberty? Okay, cool. All right, all right. Puberty. An airline encountered an unexpected challenge when over 25 sumo wrestlers arrived at two Japanese airports hoping to catch flights to a, a, a Mami Oshima. I hope I pronounced that so right. So if the plane is booked, yeah. the average size of those sumers is twice the weight of a person. Maybe even three if, times right? the Japanese, average so Japanese So 25, that w if the plane is booked, then that makes complete sense yeah. because they're occupying their weight, their footprint, their wait, footprint or their weight print is substantial. Yeah. Substantial, that makes sense. That's crazy. Meanwhile, I can't bring my fucking suitcase on. <laughs> the sumo wrestlers were traveling to participate in a competition on the island. However, the airline was concerned that the aircraft would be too heavy to fly with these exceptionally heavy passengers. Sumo wrestlers typically weigh 265 pounds. That's not so bad. Or 100. I weigh 265 pounds. Yeah, but they could be like they could be like fucking you know five six or five seven. Are you five six or five seven? No, I'm five. What, what does the fucking height have to do with anything? Because because the shorter you are, and it doesn't change the weight. I know. This but is a you, math you're, problem. You're saying. Oh my god! What a <laughs> you are some dumb Asian. I'll tell you that. Holy shit! I mean, because oh, fuck it. You know what? Fuck you, man. But fuck you and the your height Italian. has nothing you, to do with it. It's Italian. the weight. It's the math. How it's the weight because you're saying I'm 265 pounds. Well, you wear it well because you're probably taller than the sumo wrestlers. Fucking asshole. Go back to Wales where you came from. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, now I gotta get like a, a Scottish accent and an Irish accent. Well, speaking of Scott holy shit, my kids are gonna be all over the map. Yeah. I should do this for one of my kids. Yeah. Well, uh, Puberty, another article that I thought would be fun. Uh, man arrested after faking heart attacks in 20 restaurants to avoid paying bills. I need more content here. Uh, let's see. A 50-year-old man faked heart attacks in over 20 restaurants in Spain to avoid... Oh, your people. To avoid paying bills. <laughs> oh, this is going to be the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> A man faked heart attacks in at least 20 restaurants in Spain in a bid to avoid paying the bill after dining at the eateries. The 50-year-old man, originally from Lithuania, has been jailed after he faked, failed to pay the fine for his theatrical But skills. how did he get caught? I don't know. If you fucking do it to 20 restaurants, I'm pretty sure someone's going to catch on. But I don't understand because the cost... Well, how does this work? <clears throat> oh, in Spain, you don't pay for an ambulance, right? Mm. Like, okay. Maybe the same the same ambulance started picking them up. It's like, again? <laughs> like, man. Because yeah, you, you couldn't you couldn't pull that off here because yeah. you're responsible for paying all that stuff. So Is that, that factual uh, in Spain that you can't I, uh, I, I don't know. I'm right. I'm assuming in, in Europe it's free. Uh a while back, back you brought up uh, a trend that you hate is lip filler. Oh I hate that. You hate lip filler. And I hate uh you know with uh now us i hate fake boobs i hate lip fillers yeah but the lip filler is the most obvious one you know it's it's clearly you know because it's 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 an eye shot i it's well, well you know so lip fillers you know i guess it's for people who don't like themselves much like you now after your my heritage dna test you know you're all upset that you're not more french but uh you know i mean here are some examples of where it went well oh wait you're gonna show me nightmares well i mean i'm gonna show you the good stuff first is it worth the botulism in your body i don't know i i think technology is good enough i mean yeah i i, I feel here she didn't need any lip filler yeah, she that's... just she just you know wanted a little bigger lips but then uh but then you have uh then you have this shit. <laughs> oof Fuck. God damn. That, oh, that right, look at that. That is just obviously fucking. Oh, people, people, no, why? I don't, I don't, I don't get the bigger lip. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, when you go to the dentist and you, and like you get the Novocaine, like. I mean, you don't think that's hot right there? <laughs> no. 
to me that looks infected and it looks yeah. like a disease yeah uh oh my god look at this is this the same person i mean what was wrong with her before well, i know nothing clearly nothing's wrong with her what yeah but that's a fuck up right I, that's I, an infection I, uh british woman almost loses lip at botox party <laughs> Fuck. okay i've heard about stuff like this where they get together and they'll throw a party and just fucking get botox or or butt injections and so like let's get amateur botulism injections mm, mm. ah listen man I, I i'm not one for cosmetic surgery and shit like that but uh, whatever if it makes you happy so be it no blondie is the one i always tell her like less is more shall we do some uh viewer questions yeah i'm just already reeling from like i know like well thank god i don't read the comments too much <laughs> but i'm gonna get shit on oh really you're like now all self-conscious and shit a little bit well, juice asks favorite meal the other one makes i mean my answer is pretty obvious but do you have a favorite meal that i've made for you do you even remember I don't think you remember. No. No. Beauty in Essex wasn't yours. No. Uh, I can't remember. Mira was a long time yeah, ago. I, I can't don't remember that. Me. Yeah. So I appreciate the sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. You always finish them. I always eat I, them. Yeah. You always eat them. Okay. All right. That, that would be a no. Be <laughs> how do y'all tend to spend your free time off? And how do you balance the workload with maintaining a healthy relationship with your friends and family? Oh, you and I are gonna have very different answers to this one. Yeah, first of all, you don't need that many friends. Yeah, agreed. If you can count if you can count your best friends on two hands, you have way too many already. Yeah, agreed. I spend all my time with the, the baby now. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's easy. But you're also at a different stage of your career, your life, you've put in the work, you've made your investments and you know, you're- I have definitely spent more time with my two and a half year old so far than I spent with my first three kids total. <laughs> easy. Yeah. Easily. Yeah, yeah. I can see that because I'm, I'm in that, I don't have, I don't have like another kid sitting around somewhere, uh, secret kid sitting around somewhere, but- Neither do I. I. No, well, the point I'm making is uh, I definitely don't spend that much time, as much time as I would like to with uh, both my kids. I'm working all the time. Right now I'm building our podcast, you know, doing all the uh, groundwork and stuff. And I know it will pay off. And I have a very supportive wife who allows me to do this and gives me a very lot of- Very supportive. Yes, very supportive. Gives me a lot of rope, enough to hang myself with. Um, but with that said, that comes out of trust. Um, and I'll be honest, I have no balance. I am definitely a workaholic. I definitely spend a lot. I'm of on the tail end of that now. Yeah. Yeah. And what you have now is what I'm looking to achieve. You know, there was that question of what's on your bucket list for your careers. And I was, I, my response was I'm in the middle of it right now. Like once I have my own successful restaurant, I'm good, you know? And uh, that's what I'm working towards right now. So to answer your question, I have no balance with my workload. Um, I am fully investing into my career and fortunately I have a very supportive family, but when I do hang out with my family, we fucking hang out. You know, we, we, we go out, you know, we have a good time. Well, I'm very lucky that I create my own schedule. Like nobody di dictates my timeline or anything like that. So you're a fortunate man, Paul Dinamiel. All right. What is one piece of advice that the two of you would give to people who are trying to get more involved in creating? their own recipes. We touched on this. A little bit. A little bit. More about specific ingredients and techniques, but creating your own recipe. Leave your kitchen and go explore, first of all. Don't limit yourself to what's inside your cupboard and your refrigerator. Actually, the best way to cook is to go shopping for the ingredients you want fresh and cooking those ingredients that same day. The American way of shopping, of buying a truckload of food and then filling up your refrigerator well, and your freezer very and it is very American. Any place else on the planet, your refrigerator only has the food you shop for that day. Yeah, or two at most. And and refrigerators are very small because you only you shop every single day. You get the meat every day, you get your protein every day or every other day, but close enough that- That was one thing I really appreciated appreciated about living in Asia is that exact principle. You like, you bought fresh shit every day. Every day. It was really nice, really nice. 
Um, I have nothing to add to that, honestly. I think that's a great answer. Wave, he asks, when do you, uh, when do you guys are gonna... <laughs> Some people really have to work on their grammar. When do you guys are gonna start cooking videos together? Frenchie and nephew Brian cooking French onion soup burgers, making new dishes and exploring things, sharing your experience while cooking something like this back in the day and maybe bring some peas to the table. Wait, uh, I, I already, I'm sorry, I already left the building. <laughs> uh, well, we kind of touched upon this. That room, wide cam, behind those green doors is a bigger room. And that's where we plan to build a studio kitchen, but it's gonna take time. Frenchie and I are in no fucking rush, in to, no cook, rush. to cook I've anymore. I've cooked enough in my we life. Both, I'm not- Both fucking cooked enough. I'm still cooking. I'm not in show. any rush. So it will happen, but you guys will have to wait and be patient. Sorry. It would be nice that one of our cooking segments would be if you followed through on the invitation to come to my house in Jersey, and then we could just relax and do I, I, I'm going to make it there. The first video will probably be that going to your house for sure. Um, this way we don't have to wait for the studio kitchen, but it's just about me making the time right now. Cause you know, like my shit is just recovering now and I'm pretty confident by, by early next year, I can spend some quality time. We could, if we had to, we could go downstairs and do like fast recipes. No, I want to, you know, my favorite type of cooking is the, the home entertaining type of cooking where like you, Guga like Guga where you take your time you have fun you 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 really spend time together that's my favorite cooking so let's do that at my house yeah we'll do it at your house we'll do it at your house well let's aim let's aim to film that early next year there you go okay guys yeah there you go all right Ben comic graphics Brian what is your favorite Julia child recipe and what is Frenchie's favorite Julia child recipe Coco Van Coco Van oh, Fuck, I love Coco Van. And she, and she has, she, we still do the, she was very loyal to those, to the original recipes as, as I am. All the classic dishes are very loyal to the original recipe. So I've known Frenchie for a long time and I always got the burger. And I only recently tried his Coco Van. Not that I had anything against it, but it was just like, you know, I was here for the burger. And fuck me, it was good. God damn it. it. fucked you up. <laughs> it did fuck me up. Um, I love your Coco Van. As far as Julia Child recipes, there's not one I can recall off. No, no, I'm sorry. No, that's wrong. Uh, she made a, just like a classic. Roast chicken? No, no, no. Just a cl classic like boule bread. Oh. Where she put the flour in the middle of the table and was slowly incorporating the water and just watching her make bread from scratch was so mesmerizing. You know, there's a. Uh HBO or T they're redoing her how she came to be, right? Oh, are they? Yeah, oh, it's very good. Oh, I can't wait. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Uh, ooh, here's a good one. Best and worst hamburger you've ever had. You already know what's my best, but the worst, I think, is the saucier question. My best hamburger. Do we go with happy memory or do we go with quality? Follow your heart. I would say it's the Beyond Coffee Shop. Uh, greasy diner that was behind FAO Schwartz. Ooh. Yeah. Really? Because I, I remember as a kid, I would look at that store and know <laughs> I couldn't get anything out of it. <laughs> and the, the best thing I got was like that greasy burger there it's, as a kid. I'm guessing it's oh, not it's, there Oh, anymore. it's still there. Oh, it's still there. Really? Feasty Boy segment. It's a little hole in the wall. Yeah. Now, this is a veritable hole in the wall. Right. It's the counter. It's one. It's a counter and it's that's it. That's yeah. the width of and the- And is it hard to get a seat? No, because no. we would go at a, an appropriate time. Okay. But right. bacon cheeseburger, medium rare, extra cheese, crispy bacon, side of onion rings, and a very thick chocolate shake. That is my favorite fucking burger. Fuck yeah. Nice, yes. nice. I was gonna add something to this, but that was a nice way to end it, so we'll move on. But we didn't do the worst burger. Oh, we didn't do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I was gonna let that go. No, 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 no. I the, need to. There's some it. nasty burgers. All right. No, there's a lot of nasty burgers. Anything frozen, right? As much as I love the initial McDonald's, Burger King, all those fast food, the the feel after is horrendous. Yeah. So that next level of burgers so fast casual now 
barely a step above us, like the five guys, the Shake Shack mm -hmm. and all that stuff. They're okay. Yeah. But they're getting, it's satiated now. Yeah, it's, now it's getting. Yeah. I, it's, uh, Shake Shack is solid. I love In N Out. I haven't been to In N Out. Oh, that's not a good memory. Shit. Mm. That's my failed um, uh, pilot. The last time I went to In N Out was when I was shooting. Uh, TV show. I Did you fail? Because you're here now, baby. Yeah. YouTube has responded. Everyone in the comments, let Frenchie know how much you love him right now. That was a waste of time, though. Uh, anyway. Is it? Was it? Is anything a waste of time? No, because no. everything's a learning experience. <clears throat> yes. There you go. But some learning experiences we can do without. <laughs> yeah. Uh, worst burger for me. I, I had a Burger King burger maybe two years ago, and it was one of the worst burgers I've ever had. It was so disappointing. Just how far the quality has dropped from what I remember. Not that it was ever like the pinnacle what? of anything. Yeah, but, but here's the thing yeah. about the um, junk food burgers. Are they considered burgers anymore? Because the ratio of meat and all the garbage mm -hmm. between the bread and all the fillings and everything, is that, there's just the ratio of meat to... Well, I would say the ratio of meat on that Burger King burger was good. It was the meat that was terrible. It was the, um, you know, about that meat to go a little further about that meat. You know, the texture, the flavor, the cooking technique was all god awful. Here's a good um, way of judging a burger if it's good quality or not. If you take everything off and just eat the burger, and you're not happy about it, that's a bad burger. Yeah. A good burger, you should be able to eat just a burger and yeah. you'd be like happy with that. Like Checkers is a place that I think everything's bad. What's Fun Checkers? Is that checkers is like a fast, like even a step below a Burger King and McDonald's and stuff. It's uh, drive throughs only typically. I've never heard uh, of it. No, you've never heard of it? No, no I, tr I tried it once, uh, it was terrible. Everything was bad quality uh, from the, the buns to the sauces, to, it was just the Sliders. Mm-hmm. Are sliders burgers? Yeah, yeah. It's a different type of burger, but Is it? I think they—I think they're burgers. Yeah. Smash burger, sliders. Mm -hmm. Same category. Yeah, I would—I would put them in the same category. They're just different types of a burger. Okay. What's the minimal requirements for it to be a burger? Patty circumference. Is that it? Not radius, right? Or no, patty radius minimum. I don't know what's what's that. Something like like what you made on the mini versions of your French onion soup burgers. I would say that is the minimum, as far as like radius. You know, to me that's important. Any smaller than that, it becomes a slider. To but me. a bun and just a burger patty is a burger. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why? Do you have a differing opinion, or no, no. you're just curious? No, no. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. <laughs> no. Yazdani asks, "Did you have a moment in your lives where you think?" I want to be a professional chef. I want to be? Yeah. I want to be a professional no. chef. No. I know people are going to be disappointed that I say that, right? Yeah. No, because I grew up in it, so I was always doing it. So I was aspiring to doing to do something different. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to do something with racing or... And then when that wasn't a reality, I thought, okay, let's get an education. I did... Uh, uh, my baccalaureate for the French school mm -hmm. was uh, architecture. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no shit. Didn't follow through on it. Well, was I, what I was missing when I was aware or from my, you don't appreciate what you have. Right. So I think it took me going to France and spending a year there with my grandfather to appreciate like, oh, sh and then I was required to cook all the time for it was for me and him but i had the freedom now to cook whatever i want mm -hmm. mm. and i was like how old were you at that time i was probably was i driving i can so 16 yeah so okay. 16 to 17 so you're already doing it a few years oh cooking yeah 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 cause... oh no i've been cooking professionally uh prof cooking professionally means you're preparing food for customers mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i was doing that already at the age of 12 turning to 13, 14, 15, so yeah. But I was doing it because I was told to do it. Mm -hmm. The first opportunity that I was not cooking professionally mm -hmm. is when I learned, oh, I like this. Mm -hmm. So it took me cooking unprofessionally right. to realize, oh, wait, I like this. Mm -hmm. 
And then, then it made sense to me. And then I had a natural talent for it. Mm. So I, and a lot of people recognize that in me. I, I never appreciated that, but I had a good like flair, mm -hmm. taste, and I could, I could localize and I could, I could tell you what something tastes by looking at it. And I said, oh, that's gonna, that's tastes good. Mm. It's like, well, don't you have to try it? Like, no, no, I, I got it. It's right there. It's, it's already there. I don't yeah. need to, to do it. Yeah, yeah. So I had that already, that talent. My, uh, my, where I'm lacking is unused potential. Mm. I could have done a lot more with it. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. But you get, but you get, you get sidetracked by business, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, once you become a business owner, unfortunately, cooking is probably secondary. The, yeah. Secondary. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're you're a business owner now. You're not mm -hmm. the chef. And if you're a chef owner, shit's rough. You know. No. Well, it's rough, but you hold uh, all the cards. Right. Right. I, when I say rough, I'm not saying rough in like. I'm not necessarily saying it in a negative way. I'm saying it in the demand of your time. Yes. Your your mental yes, energy. Yes, you have no life. Right, right. But it's a plus as an owner. Yeah. Because I know a lot of restaurant owners who are a slave to their chef. Mm -hmm. You know, the restaurant, if the chef leaves, then all of a sudden right, you're right. fucked. Yeah, yeah. You're screwed. Yeah, yeah. Or it changes drastically. Yeah. Or you're, you're, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, for me, did I want to be a chef? Yeah. I had a moment. I was uh, supposed to go to school uh, for uh, at the John Jay School of Criminal Justice. I thought I was going to be a cop or something like that. And uh, I walked in for the first day and I was like, this sucks. And I literally walked, turned around. I didn't even go into class. I just turned around and left. So what, the classroom was depressive? Uh, just walking Depressing. through the, the, the front doors, just walking through the front doors. I was just like, this sucks. This feels like high school. You know, it is. It just it didn't feel any different. I didn't feel like I graduated to anything. To, to anything. So uh, I just needed a job. My dad knew someone who owned a pastry factory in Brooklyn, and I just fell in love with the kitchen atmosphere. Which is nice going because going to the CIA does not feel like you're going to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. Oh, yes, this exactly. Is cool. it had, like you feel like. Whoa, and you can visit the CIA. Oh yeah, yeah. You know the public now. You can eat there. They have yeah, restaurants. Yeah, yeah. they're open and to the public. It is breathtaking. It, it is, is a nice, beautiful campus, and it makes you feel. It like- It was an old Jesuit uh, church residence mm -hmm. and everything, so it was, and it's right on the Hudson. Yeah, by Hyde it's Park. Beautiful. It's beautiful. It's in Hyde Park. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Shall we do one more? Yeah. What was the most outrageous thing you've made for a customer or even just friends, family? Uh, I don't, uh, well, I'll let you go first. Oh, <laughs> I know what, I know what French you made. What? The dick steak? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. What? No, no, you have no. something in mind? Yes, I do. Oh. This is our happy place. This is our happy, this is, I love this That's, video. This is like two sticks of butter. <laughs> I love watching this video. Meanwhile, who needs to cook four chickens at home <laughs> yeah. at the same time? I do. <laughs> Two sticks of butter per chicken, four chickens. How many people did you feed that day? The table fits eight maximum, so mm. eight people. Mm. All right. So half, half a fucking chicken per person. Yeah, what? Well, that's that's yeah, the portion. Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. You come here, you get half a chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they are small. They're like natural organic chickens, not the fucking mutant chickens. Yeah, we have uh, three pounders. We yeah. use three pounders. So <clears throat> those are probably four. I want to eat that. Is that your current kitchen now? Yeah, oh, pretty much. Sick. All right. I'm excited. And we could work around it. Like there's an island. Yeah. And then the prep table has its own sink. And then you have the other sink to do your dirty your dirty deeds. Um, for me, I didn't cook anything crazy, but uh, I've definitely made fucking feasts before. You know, oysters, shrimp cocktails, everything. Someone like breaking that. in? Oh, not well. I mean, they can try to rob us. They could try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I've just done like fucking feasts. You know, just just really real charcuterie boards, crudite, shrimp cocktail, uh, fucking um, you know skewers. Uh, you know, uh, what was it prime rib? Just fucking everything you can think of. Ribs. I do remember something crazy that I cooked. Oh, give it to me. Give it to me, Frenchie. I had 
I cooked, <clears throat> and this, let me put it in the context. It was the HBO premiere of Game of Thrones. Oh. So you had, I had to cook something that was medieval. Oh, hell yeah. So you know how you do lamb racks? Yeah. Imagine doing that with Tom, like the whole side of fuck yeah. I did that. How did you cook that? One? Barely. I had to cook them separate, yeah. uh, like two sides separately. Yeah. But then when you put it together, it looked. I I should have it somewhere. Um. And then I it looked it was so awesome. It looked so good. And then and then we literally we did that. It looked it looked like Fred Flintstone yeah, yeah. like type of. And yeah. it was Game of Thrones, so yeah. it looked like primitive and yeah. it looked medieval basically yeah. the word is medieval right but then i would and then i would have uh turkey drumsticks like you get at oh. you know you know so it had to yeah. be like i'm all about the turkey drumsticks man but i really wish that they would pull out all those tendons out yeah of yeah that is annoying that like is it's annoying. For, it's very easy but, to do but but like if you do but like, those are smoked i was just about to say if you do true barbecue with turkey legs it's easy to do that when they do the grilled ones at like fairs and stuff that's tough but if you do like a true- But those are hams. Those are like little turkey drumstick hams. Yeah. yeah. Well, buddy, that was a lot of fun. That's how I met Robert De Niro. Oh, really? Well, I knew him beforehand, but I met him later in life again because he bought one of um, uh, the tables for my charity. Oh, no shit. And he just ended up, uh, I think he just did it to be nice. He used to be friends with my mom, so I think he was just doing me a favor. Oh, no shit. All right, right on. I did not know you knew Bob No, I De don't, Niro. I don't. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. You just met him. I times. well, no, I'm, I he he wasn't talking to me when I was a kid. He was gotcha, friends gotcha. with my mom because she he lived next door to where she had the um, the restaurant. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I mean, they knew each other. So, uh, Robert De Niro bought her a little. Remember when potbelly pigs were in fashion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He bought her a potbelly pig, and we got we were stuck with that a pig in the house. I was like, what the fuck is this? Why is there a pig in the house? That pig didn't make it through the season, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we did making it. I am Chef Brian Sound, not your typical chef. Winner of Beat Bobby Flay Season 1. Paul Frenchie, the animal, the namiel, loser of Season 1 of Beat Bobby Flay. And we'll see you guys really soon. Bye. Bye.